All right, what's going on? It's hot. The fish are officially 98% done spawning. You know, you will see fish spawn late. You'll see them spawn into mid-June, but at least down here where I'm at. But for the most part, it's pretty much summer patterns or the early summer patterns going forward. And this is kind of where the fish get a little bit more predictable. This is where whenever you figure out where they are, you can kind of catch fish day after day after day after day off some of the same place. There you have it. If a tree falls in the woods, does it make a noise? Even though we were around to hear it, it definitely made a noise. But anyways, this is where the fish get a little more predictable. They kind of are going to stay where they get in the next week or so for a couple of months. You know, all the way throughout summer, they're kind of going to be in the same place, but they're going to get a little bit harder to catch as the summer goes along. But we're going to show you all kind of five baits that I leave tied on literally all summer. I have them in the boat at all times. Y'all see me out here fishing a lot, fun fishing when I'm not in a tournament, and y'all can tell I like to throw a Spro Frog, I like to throw an Ace Jig, I like to throw an uh, Apex Swimming Jig, I like to throw all those types of baits, I like flipping, all that type of stuff whenever I'm just fun fishing, that's what I like to do. But these are what's actually in the boat whenever we have a summer tournament, whenever we have, or I'm just out here fun fishing, I have these in here, kind of as my bailout baits, but these are kind of the five baits I have the most confidence in for summer with the exception of a couple and obviously if you go to the Tennessee River you're probably going to want to take away some of these and add in some other ones and if you go to some place where like it's a river system where you're going to be fishing primarily shallow in the summer you're going to kind of take away you know some of these baits and then add a couple more shallow ones in but for the most part these are the five to cover your basis no matter where you go in the country in the summertime these are ones that I have confidence there's nowhere I would go and not have these tied on is it raining or windy you never know this time of year. The rain shower just pop up, it rain 15 minutes and then go away. Let's, uh, unfortunately, as y'all can see behind me, we've actually got two spinning poles laid out. But whenever the bite gets tough or you just need to put some fish in the boat faster than you know you can on the frog and stuff, you have to pick up some spin, spinning poles. But we're just gonna kind of jump into this. We're gonna save kind of the best for last. So let's start off with you know, fishing out deep. Number one, we'll go through the spinning poles first. This is a drop shot. I mean, this is as standard as it gets. You know, I if I'm gonna have one drop shot rigged up at all times, it's gonna be one with a six inch worm. This is obviously just a straight tail worm, you know. And it's got the two alt light wire worm drop shot hook from Gamakatsu. This is the one that Aaron Martin's designed. Let me turn my phone off, hold on. This is the one that Aaron Martin's designed. This is the one that I like. I like having a little bit, I like having a good size hook on there. I mean, a lot of times I'm still trying to catch four, five, six pounders on this bait. And I want to have it rigged like this, not nose hook, because if I come to a brush pile, I want to be able to throw it in it. You see this one actually got some teeth marks on it. But if I come to a brush pile and be able to throw it in it, if I'm just live scoping fish out off the side of a flat, they'll still eat it this way. Now, if I'm only fishing around, you know, live scope fish, I will nose hook it all the time. If I'm not going to be throwing around cover, I'm going to have it nose hooked. But for the most part, as a standard, this is going to be the hook that I'm going to use. I have it rigged just like this. As a standard, quarter to a 3 8 ounce weight, this untamed tackle drop shot weight, but it's going to be a quarter to a 3 8 ounce. I would say a quarter is a better standard F for me. A quarter seems to be a little bit better for all around. If you're fishing super deep, like, you know, 22 to 30, you might want to go to a 3 8 and that's fine, but that's going to be my standard drop shot rig. This is on, uh, this is 12 pound SX1, Sunline SX1 braid in the high vis yellow, tied to a 10 pound Sunline shooter leader. I like that a <clears throat> little bit thinner main line. I've went to, if I'm fishing in Florida, if I'm fishing at Santee Cooper, my braid main line is going to be a 16, 18, something a little bit more stout. But for the most part, I have no problem with the 12, I've almost never broke it. But it just gives me a little more confidence as I fish around super heavy cover to have that 16 pound test braid. But I really like the 12 as a standard because you can throw it so much further. You get a little bit better fall rate out of it. And you get, to me, I feel like you get a little bit smoother. Like whenever those fish are pulling drag, I feel like it's a little bit smoother because it's actually a smaller line going across these Fuji guides. And these are Fuji guides on all these rods. So these are extremely high quality guides that are on all these 13 fishing envy rods. But when you have a bigger piece of line going across the guide insert, it just creates more drag. So I feel like you do have a little bit smoother drag the lighter line you go. So 12 pound standard and that's a dang drop shot rig. I mean, everybody knows how to throw a drop shot. Everybody knows, you know, that you catch them on it. And I throw this literally everywhere. Rock, sand, clay, 
you know, if I'm sight fishing for one cruising on the bank, if I'm in a brush pile, they're suspended underneath the boat. I throw this thing literally everywhere. Now, I'm from Alabama, so the next one is going to be an obvious choice. A shaking head. Shaky head, whatever you want to call it. We are this close to being to having our one from Untamed Tackle coming out. It's a really, really good one. I love that thing. But I can't show it just yet. I've caught some fish on on video, though. But I can't show it just yet. So this is just more of a standard ball head with a Gamakatsu hook one that I have right here. This is actually one that I was throwing on Pickwick. 3 8 ounce because I was fishing a little bit deeper. Typically, I'm not going to be throwing 3 8 I'm going to be throwing a 3 16 up to like a 5 16 if I'm fishing offshore for the most part. Uh, to 20 foot, I'll be throwing a 5 16 but if I'm fishing shallow at all, it's going to be an eighth to a three sixteenths for the most part. I would say a good standard, though, something between three sixteenths, a quarter, five sixteenths, whichever one you have confidence in. And this is a 13 fishing BFF worm. It's just a really good straight tail worm. I really like how it's got this spade tail on the back. I feel like it has a little bit more action in the water than some other worms. But I just really like this worm. This is in the red sweet chili sauce color. I mean, it's just like a, a red bug color that, you know, is a more typical color. But this is on the... Both of these, the, the last two, I didn't even say the rod, but seven foot three, medium, fast spinning rod. This is the 13 fishing envy. Like I said, all these have Fuji guides on them. I like with the shaky head, definitely a medium rod. I don't want anything that's a medium light. If I'm nose hooking the drop shot, I will use a medium light. But for the most part, with a shaky head, you want to be able to set the hook at least a little bit and you know get that hook through that worm into that fish's mouth. So I'm going to use a medium. Same kind of setup right here, but I have a different type of braid on the back of this. This is actually the Sunline Asagi X Plasma. This is also a 12 pound line. A little bit different here. The straight out of the box, I've said this a few times, straight out of the box, that Sunline SX1. It's a really, really good braid straight whenever you first pull it up. It's super soft. I mean, it's, it's re really strong, no doubt, but it's super soft and casts really, really well. But this X-Plasma actually has a coating on the outside of it. And what that does is when you throw in those spin rods, everybody gets those wind knots. And this braid with that coating never swells with whenever it gets in the water. It never, you know, like gets worn out and, and gets like bigger and softer, which all braids do that. They're woven kind of tight when they're brand new. And then after you use them, they actually kind of expand and lose some of that tightness that's woven into it. And it actually swells a little bit, and that's what creates those wind knots whenever you throw in it. That soft line just kind of touching each other, it just wraps around each other. And this has that coating on it, on the uh, X-Plasma, and that makes it where you almost never get a wind knot fishing with this on a spin reel. And you can put this on your reel and use it for like all dang year, maybe multiple years. I don't keep it on there that long, but you could probably use it for multiple years and never have any problems with it. So I've kind of... I'm using all kinds of different braids on my spin rods, but I think this is probably the best one. I think it's also the strongest one, but this is 12 pound X Plasma tied to a 10 pound Sunline Shooter Leader. That's pretty typical for me. My standard leader size is going to be 10. That's one that I can throw in brush piles and I have a lot of confidence in it. And I'm going to throw the shaky head in brush piles, shaky head in rocks, all that type of stuff. And I want to have just a little bit more strength. Obviously, if you're fishing some crystal clear water for suspended fish or you're not around any gnarly cover, you drop down to eight, seven, six, whatever you need to. I'm not going to six, but I'll go down to eight. And that's pretty much the setup for a shaky head. This is pretty standard this is what you're going to throw out there and cover water on rock piles cover water around boat docks all that type of stuff you know this is going to be the bait whenever i need to get a bite and i'm just trying to just throw to visible cover or offshore rocks all that type of stuff this is just a bait i have a ton of confidence with this time of year in the summertime i know it's going to get some bites and it'll catch some really really big ones in the summer you would think just this little jig head with a six inch worm on it uh, that'll catch you a keeper too no this thing catches great big ones i've caught so many big ones around here this time of year whenever it's super tough so setup number two another just confidence bait now let's jump into one where this is one where you can literally turn your day around quickly when you can get these fish to fire up on this thing this is the spro little john dd this is in a clear chartreuse color you can see it's on the bottom right there this is just one of the best deep cranking baits that's kind of a regular size you know like they make some deep cranking baits that have a lot bigger bodies and stuff like that but as far as just a consistent all the time ledge fishing offshore points cranking really deep brush piles all that type of stuff this is one of the best uh, deep diving crankbaits a lot of people throw this obviously it's from spro and i am sponsored by spro which makes it a little bit easier to get them especially in the good colors 
but this is gonna be one of those things where you pull up to a deep point a lot of times whenever it gets tough you don't want to graph over those fish you don't want to side image those fish during the tournament this is a really good bait where you can pull up and fan cast around on the points figure out exactly where those aggressive fish are sitting figure out exactly if they're sitting on that spot where they're feeding or not and then you can cover a ton of water with it offshore it's just a really really good bait a deep diving crankbait in the summer is just obviously one of the top picks for everybody i have this on right now this is on 12 pound sunline shooter <clears throat> a lot of people crank with sunline sniper i really like the shooter i just feel like whenever that bait's super far out there and i've got some pretty big treble hooks on there i just feel like i get a better feel off the sunline shooter and i feel like i get a little bit better hook set on that sunline shooter so 12 pound sunline shooter this is a 6.3 to 1 gear ratio 13 fishing inception and this is a 7 foot 9 13 fishing envy cranking rod like i said all these have fuji guides on them and forever fuji has been the best guide so i mean it makes it super easy whenever you're buying a nice rod and it's getting good components but that's the rod that i use and i, I just get used to uh hooking my baits onto the reels because all 13 fishing reels have this little hook keeper right here you just hook your bait you just hook your hook right around there around that little key hook hook keeper that's on the reel it's like you can see my jig i got a hook like that but my cranking rods they also have a little treble hook keeper right there but there you go that's it that's one of the you cannot go to a summertime tournament or summertime fishing without some kind of deep diving crankbait tied on and that's my favorite and especially when the water's clear this is a really really good color now this is what i want to do this is the way i want to fish when i'm at home pecking around fun fishing fishing new water stuff like that these are the two that i absolutely love to throw the most and it goes without saying that a daggum spro popping frog the original the regular one this is the first frog i fell in love with this is the one that i never go to a summertime tournament without this thing tied on or even fishing no matter what y'all seen it y'all seen the videos it's all i want to do man but this is pretty simple just a spro popping frog this color is actually green pumpkin they make a lot of really good colors i was like you know y'all seen me before i don't really care that much about colors i just kind of ask hunter which color should i tie on she'll pick one or else i'll just make sure if i tie on a different color i just tie on three or four different colors in a day and i seem to catch them all on about all the colors about the same but this is on 60 pound sunline braid right here this is a uh, new braid that's going to be coming out very very soon and this is my favorite braid i've ever used in my entire life i don't even know if i'm supposed to say that yet but this is a new braid that's going to be out very soon I, I love this stuff and this is i mean some of the smoothest best casting braid i've ever used y'all y'all see it before long it'll be in a box all pretty and shined up and y'all say i'll say this is the one that i've been using for a while but i love this stuff this is on an 8 to 1 gear ratio 13 fishing inception just i mean whenever you're you, whenever i'm using any bait that i work with the rod and i've said this a few times before all you're doing with the reel is picking up the slack and then reeling in the fish and then reeling in your bait to make another cast so i feel like you want the fastest gear ratio reel you can possibly have in that scenario so if i'm using a bait where i'm working it with the rod it's always eight to one gear ratio reel and it's no different for the frog eight to one 60 pound braid this is a seven foot six heavy fast action envy and i'm gonna tell you this rod is extremely powerful when i set the hook with a frog fish on this y'all seen that one clip where i snatched the fish completely out the water this rod is extremely powerful really good for whenever you're making those super long casts or you're in super heavy cover and those fish get you in kind of a compromised position it's a really really good rod for that if you're making really short casts to more open water and stuff like that it might be a little bit too powerful but if you're making long casts and super thick cover or skipping it way back underneath of something this is the rod i mean it's so powerful but it's still relatively light for the amount of power it's actually it's actually kind of kind of cool the way they did this rod but that is my number one favorite thing to fish especially in the summertime so move on to this is the time of year whenever i start getting bites again on this bait right here this is obviously the untamed tackle ace jig this is one this is my baby right here this one that i made i actually caught some on pickwick on this exact same one still had it tied on in the rod locker so it's pretty easy this is the don't color just looks really good like a bluegill i mean it looks just like a bluegill in my opinion at least it does it, it really imitates a bluegill well and that's one of the things you're trying to do this time of year 
is these bluegill are up shallow. They're around docks. They're around lay down trees. They're actually spawning, making bluegill beds in the back of some of these cuts, the back of some of these pockets. And this is just one of those baits I'm going to pull up. I'm going to flip it to rock. I'm going to flip it to docks. I'm going to flip it to lay down trees. I'm going to flip it directly in the middle of the bluegill bed. And I'll even skip the sucker under some deeper docks and swim it out and try to, you know, look like a bluegill. And, from, you know, as far as that goes to swimming it. So that is, if I can go get some bites between this and that Spro Frog, I'll have a phenomenal day. It's just what I love to do, and I know I can generate some really, really big bites on this. One of the biggest things I like is in the summertime, a lot of times we have really clear water. I mean, that's just how it goes. In the summertime, you get a little bit less rain. You get a little bit less, like, constant rain, and you get a little bit less water. Uh, stain in the water a little more clarity so i like having that little bit smaller profile jig still catch some really really big ones on it this jig comes with a little bit finer cut skirt finer strand cut skirt on it and this is a half ounce this is one of the cut this is the size i leave on all the time if i have one tied on it's going to be a half ounce that's just what it's going to be and i'll use a three eighths if i'm swimming it more or if i'm skipping under some super shallow docks or flipping in some super shallow lay downs or like if i'm on the if i'm on a flat in the back of a pocket or something i'm pitching the stumps that are that deep i'll use a 3 8 but as a standard it's going to be a half ounce this is the same thing like i said i use i work this bait with the rod so eight to one gear ratio reel this is 20 pound sunline shooter i will go to 22 if i'm going to be exclusively flipping into heavy cover but for the most part if i'm just casting it around it's going to be 20 pound sunline shooter and this is a seven foot three medium heavy extra fast envy rod it's just a rod that handles all baits kind of this size extremely well just love these rods but anyways that's my top five summertime baits leave me a comment down below let me know what is a bait that you can't go fishing with in the summertime or you can't go fishing without in the summertime there's a lot of baits you can go fishing with let me know one that you you will never ever leave at home and obviously your lake's gonna be a little bit different than mine you you might do what now where can you get them you can get almost all these baits at shop carls i got a box right there that i'm about to open you can get almost all these baits at shop carls but anyways if you have a different bait you that you use on some of the lakes that you fish at home let me know below i appreciate y'all watching that's my five summer baits that are always in here